it's an album where we're all involved in the writing of every track, really, apart from there's a couple that each, each of us do an individual track on the album, but all the rest are group written songs. Um, and we did that to some extent on Duke. And it's what we've been trying to get back to doing now for quite a while. And we've found that since we've all done solo projects, that it's easier to do that. Um, because we can get rid of our own compositions on the solo albums and uh, and come back with you know working more as a group because we feel that's what we do best and it's the reason why the group exists is because the three of us enjoy what we can create together because obviously as individuals obviously we can write songs and we can then perform on each other's songs if you like a bit as session musicians which is what we felt a little bit what we were doing on and then there were three um, but there's no real point in doing that I mean you're not you're not gaining that much from being in a group so that we really wanted to get back to writing together as a group because that's where we feel we create something special. You see, in Genesis we've always been one where every person is able to have as strong a voice as he likes. Um, and, you know, in the past, I mean, I'd say that we tended to, you know, one of, in, at various times different people have dominated the group to some extent in terms of twos or threes. I think it's but now it's probably the most equally balanced group we've ever had, that all three of us have an equally strong opinion in the group. Well, I think Mike and I have, have always had a strong role within the group, right, since its inception. Uh, Phil has taken a lot longer, I think, because I think he was, you know, slightly, certainly not as a writer, he didn't have a particularly strong role to play within the group for a very long time, and it started to write more on Duke, um, he, more contribution from him. And on this album, I mean, his contribution is as great as, as Mike and mine. You know, we've, we've been writing for a long time, obviously, a lot of Genesis material. And it's just, I don't know, he's just matured, I think, and also doing his own solo album, I think... Um, Obviously, it's very successful. It gave him a lot of self-confidence, you know, as a writer as well as a performer. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's, it's, you know, it's done a lot of good. Uh, I think the, um, you know, some of the composition, the standard composition is very good on the album, you know. But he writes in a different kind of way to Mike and I, you know. And so it, it, it balances out quite well, I think. The three of us all write in a different kind of manner. And that's, that's why when we write together as, as, as a trio, that it doesn't really sound like any one of us at all. We, we tend to create something a bit different altogether we change our, our own feelings about music changes over the years um, you know back in 1970-71 when we first started doing the sort of the, the more heavy arrangements of music I mean we, there was virtually no one else doing it you know and it's something that seemed interesting to us and we wanted to try and explore that and also to be able to reproduce it live was another thing to be able to make a, a big sound live it was just an interesting thing to try and do and I think more and more now we just feel we'd like to try and do something different. We felt we'd, we explored, um, by the time we got to the end of Wind and Mothering particularly, we felt we'd explored the sort of the, the big grandiose songs to quite a large extent, and though, though we still had plenty of it in us. We felt that we'd like to try some other things as well, so we wanted to try some of the slightly more, slightly simpler things. And also try the simpler arrangements, which was we started doing more on Duke, I think, with songs particularly um, Duchess, and turn it on again and things where the arrangement's very simple but we felt that the songs I and mean, I still believe Duchess is one of the strongest songs we've ever done and it's a very simple song and it uses about four chords and yet I think it it says an awful lot because it's just a very because it's very direct and I think sometimes if you, you leave a song without all that much arrangement it can come through sometimes better you know but that's not to so say dislike the old stuff because I don't I mean I, I still enjoy it very much there's still some we do on stage that I think is very good well, I don't really care what people think. I, I judge a song totally by the effect it has on me. And there are songs that use 100 chords that I like and songs that use one chord that I like, you know. Um, I don't think chords or anything really matter very much. It, it, what's, it's, just, it, it's just the emotional effect of a song. Uh, it, to me, I suppose, it, I don't know what it's down to. Sort of rather nebulous quality, sort of called soul, I suppose, really, is what I, what I think of it as, really. Uh, that no amount of arrangement or dis disguising things can can disguise if the song hasn't basically got it it hasn't got it you know for me yeah i don't really care what, what criticism we get criticized the other way so often in terms of that we're over complex um the english press particularly tend to sort of criticize us for that i suppose but it's, you know it's just to me it's just the effect it has on you if you like it fine if you don't like it you may have to sort of find endless reasons why you don't like it for me it's enough to say i don't like it if i don't like something i just don't listen to it and bother with it you know when it's good again there's plenty of good stuff around which i, I like and well, you know, different albums are different things, different different stuff. I mean, I, I don't think that anyone, if anyone who um, liked particularly those kind of songs, I still think there's, there's a lot of scope for, for them on this album. It's just a slightly different approach to the songs. So they're not necessarily a lot of the different, um, the differences that occur, say, in a song like that, 
are now distributed amongst other songs rather than necessarily all being in one song you know it's just a, a different approach I'm, I'm confident that a lot of people who've liked Genesis in the past will still like this album and, and, and you know and it's for me it's just one album along a road you know I mean if you still like One for Vine that's fine you've still got Wind and Mothering you can still go on playing that it doesn't matter we haven't got to do it again on this album uh, for people to like it what we'd like to try and do is something else on this album so that when they can listen to Wind and Mothering and say yes I really like that and then listen yeah. to this this is something different yes I really like that but um, there's no way you can please all the people all the time. There's no point in pretending that you can. Um, and you're going to lose, and I, I believe we do, I believe any group does actually, lose a lot of fans every year. Uh, not just because they stop liking you, but because they get older and they don't care so much or something else comes along and they like it better. And so to remain a fresh band that people still like, you've got to be constantly, I think, constantly changing in a way so that people you pick up fresh fans as well as losing old fans you know things change there are still probably one or two people around who bought those uh, I'm sure there's some people around who like Trespass and still like us you know the Beach Boys when they did Pet Sounds were my favourite ever group you know well now I wouldn't say they were I mean the last album I really liked by them was probably Holland you know which is quite a while ago now and I haven't, didn't like every album between Pet Sounds and Holland you know I wouldn't expect to you know it doesn't really worry me Pet Sounds still exists still a great album still enjoy it doesn't matter for me. I still like the Beach Boys for that reason, you know. I don't think there's anybody that I've followed right with. Any group that I liked during the whole of their existence was sort of the Beatles, but they only were only around really for about four or five years. I mean, well, I suppose a bit longer than that, but what well, Let It Be wasn't a very good album, I don't think, whatever. But Abbey Road was a good album. And so everything from Please Please Me to Abbey Road was good. But it's it's not really that long a space of time, you know. But if you're going to, if you keep going for 10, 12 years, you know, it's like the Stones. I loved them in the early days. I don't really have much time for them now, you know. There must be hundreds of other people around like that. But I think there are new people who like them, younger people who, who like them now, otherwise they wouldn't be valid anymore. We've always been very closely involved with the production of our albums, really whoever's been credited with it, but it's just, um, particularly with Dave Henschel, he he'd kind of could create a good sound. He knew pretty much where he was heading without being having to be directed very much, you know. Well, on this album, we'd, we got a producer, an engineer. He still had quite a few of his own ideas, but someone who would do what we wanted to do. And so we were able to just sort of go to extremes with things. I think every technical man is always a bit worried about his meters, you know, and they go into the red or something. I mean, whatever it happens to be in, in terms of any aspect. They don't like to overdo effects too much. I always believe that for an audience, you know, you, do, you put an effect on a record and they don't really hear it unless it's very overstated. But if you overstate the effect, then they hear it. And so that's what we were trying to do on this album, was to sort of to, to do that a bit. You know, I think we've, we've always had it in us to produce. We know what sounds, we know what we want to sound good, you know, the kind of sounds we're heading for. I'm better than anyone else, really. And in a sense, we've always produced an album in the sense that we always decide exactly what it goes on in the album and exactly what order it goes on, how long the gaps are between the songs. We also tend to define virtually all the sounds of the instruments on an album because you know we know what we're producing you know and so the producer's work was has always been rather more to kind of uh, interpret what we're doing you know i mean obviously he has his own way of getting a drum sound and a vocal sound a bit those sort of things you know and that we were able to go a little bit more for our own thing on this and, and to experiment slightly more in those fields it's really nice to be able to sort of fiddle with the knobs yourself and to and to do what you want really totally but to be able to feel all the same though with Hugh, Hugh Padgham, who was the engineer on this, that he was quite good enough to be able to get anything, you know, pretty much anything you wanted to get. If you wanted to get a sort of straight sound, you could say to him, you wanted such and such, and he would be able to get it. In terms of the things like keyboard sounds or something on the album, that is that is me. Um, as I say, there's not that much a producer can do with those kind of sounds, apart from, you know, I mean, there's not much scope. The, where the scope for a producer, I mean, obviously is in slotting the sounds together in terms of how they fit, fit with each other. You know, the actual sound quality of an album, a lot of it does depend on, on something like myself because a keyboard player is the thing that is different, more different from each group. The guitarists tend to sound more like each other than, in a way than keyboard players do in lots of ways because keyboard players have many more instruments at their disposal and you know, some people just play piano, other people just play organ or something, you know, and it, it's quite a distinctive sort of thing. You know, you can, you can see what the, similar, the, the sound qualities that exist throughout which has sort of only changed gradually throughout our career you know and those are the ones obviously that we've always been responsible for i think when dave's first started producing us at the time of trick of the tail um he was he we sounded a great deal better than we did before just because it was the first time that we actually sort of started to come out of the speakers at all you know always before that we'd have this problem that the sounds always tended to be a bit muffled and something you know we're just suffering from basic engineering faults uh, whereas dave you know is a, apart from any any attributes he has as a producer is an excellent engineer as of course is Hugh. 
And that's what you need, just a person. We've always been looking for that, the person who has the technical ability, right, which we lack, because obviously we're not, we don't, not particularly good at saying whether the particular freaks we want to pull out is at eight kilohertz or something, you know, but you need the guy to know that that's what you're trying to talk about, right? That's, that's what I feel an engineer's job is. And that's what we discovered really with, um, with Hugh, I think, the sort of person who can do that kind of job very well. I mean, you know, I have my reservations about Phil's album. I like In the Air very much, so it's a lovely track, but the, the rest of the album, you know, I could, I could take or leave, really. Well, there's one track on it that on the new album called uh, which is called Man on the Corner, which is Phil's song, and it does sound a bit like his own album. That's fair enough. That's his song, you know. When did he write it? After Face Value. Other than that, the only other track that I think that relates in the slightest bit to his album is a track called No Reply At All because it uses the brass players, which he found a lot of fun to use on his album. And so he thought it'd be nice to try it on this album, which we, we were sort of went ahead with. But I think all the other tracks are, are sort of very much, you know, very much Genesis tracks. I don't really see the influence. The influence, I think, is stronger from Duke album in a way of tracks like Turn On Again and Duchess, which stimulated us to go in a certain direction, I feel, that this album perhaps follows up more than anything else all of us we're all involved in everything really and we decide on the light show really um but we obviously have people who help us in technical terms again just like in everything else obviously the detail of the lighting effects is work the, the lighting person has his own freedom but we, we always work out the sort of the big climax moments and things like that quite carefully um you know i mean in the last show things like the afterglow sort of the pink lights at the end and, and various things all the big effects you know which we work out as the key points and then the, leave it up to the lights operator who we have faith in to um to work out the rest of the show so that it sort of can build up to those points